Riches and glory comes to those who seek it. Not far from the town of Phandalin is a mysterious ruin waiting to be discovered. Will it be you who brings prosperity to the small town? Only time will tell. Today, I will walk you through the short adventure designed for 4 to 5 players that will see them level from 1 to 5 found in the Dungeons and Dragons starter set. This walkthrough will contain spoilers and will make some assumptions about the outcome of certain scenarios to provide a brief overview of the adventure. With that in mind, let's begin with the first part, Goblin Arrows. You are hired by a dwarf named Gujin Rockseeker to deliver a wagon of provisions from the city of Neverwinter to a trading post in the settlement of Phandalin. Gunjun claims that he and his brother have found something big and tells you that he'd pay you 10 gold pieces if his supplies make it safely to the trading post. Gunjun and a warrior named Sildar Hallwinter decide to depart ahead of you in order to arrive early and take care of some business. On the road to Phandalin, you notice two horses belonging to both Gunjun and Sildar lying across the road, pierced and killed by arrows. As you approach the horses, four goblins ambush you and a fight commence. After your victory over the four goblins, you discover a hidden trail. If you were able to capture any goblins and persuade them to reveal information, they would reveal that they belong to a tribe known as the Kragmaw, and the trail leads to their hideout. Their leader is a bugbear named Clark, who answers to the chief of the Kragmaw tribe, King Grawl. Clark was told by a messenger that the Kragmaws were being paid by someone named the Black Spider to ambush and capture Gundren. After hearing this, Clark followed orders and delivered Gundren to King Grawl. Upon receiving this information, you depart on the trail towards the Kragma Hideout. In the Kragma Hideout, you meet a goblin named Yamik, who is holding Sildar captive in the cave. Yamik attempts to strike a deal with you in exchange for the release of Sildar. He is currently second in command of the Kragma Hideout and wishes for you to eliminate Clark in his cave. In doing so, he will become the new goblin leader and promise to release Sildar. Regardless if you kill Clark or refuse his deal, Yumik will toss Sildar into a deadly fall. If you are quick, however, you will be able to stabilize Sildar before he dies. After rescuing Sildar, he reveals that Gundren has been taken to the Black Spider and that Gundren holds a map showing the secret location of the Wave Echo Cave. Sildar then requests that you escort him to Phandalin in exchange for 50 gold pieces. Before leaving, he also wishes to clear the hideout in order to prevent future goblin attacks. You take him on his offer, as you still need to deliver Gundren's provisions. As you wipe out the cave in order to prevent future raids, you notice it is full of supplies marked by a symbol of a blue lion. With that in the back of your mind, you head to the city of Phandalin. The rutted track emerges from a wooded hillside, and you catch your first glimpse of Phandalin. The town consists of 40 or 50 simple log buildings, some built on old fieldstone foundations. More old ruins, Crumbling stone walls covered in ivy and briars surround the newer houses and shops, showing how this must have been a much larger town in centuries past. Most of the newer buildings are set on the sides of a cart track, which widens into a muddy main street of sorts as it climbs towards a ruined manor house on a hillside of the east side of town. Sildar seems much more at ease. My friends, he says, let us secure lodgings. I'm told the local inn is very quaint. You have arrived to Phandalin during the late day. Perhaps it is wise to take Sildar's advice and rest until the morning. The Stonehill Inn is the lodging that you may reside for a night's rest. It is a quaint place for those to unwind from a long journey. Here, you converse with some patrons to get some information of the town. The only person who provides any relevant information is Trelina, the innkeeper's wife. She tells you that a local woodcarver named Thel has been murdered and his body has been taken by a group of ruffians known as the Red Brands. Additionally, Trelina tells you that Thel's wife, daughter, and son have now gone missing. After a night's rest, you greet the new day with open arms. You decide it is time to deliver your supplies to the trading post as part of your agreement with Gundren. You hear of a location known as Barthen's Trading Post and make your way there. As you approach the post, you notice a middle-aged man with a lean physique. He introduces himself as Elmar Barthen and a good friend of Gundren. He thanks you for delivering the supplies and hands you 10 gold pieces for your troubles. Barthen also mentions that Gundren's brothers, Nundro and Thardin, are camped outside of the town and are to return soon in order to resupply. You thank him for the payment before exiting the post. While looking for a location to purchase armor and weapons, you are directed to the Lineshield Coster. 
Hanging above the front door of this modest trading post is a sign shaped like a wooden shield with a blue line painted on it. Here you find a sharp-tongued woman in her 30s named Lanine, who has an array of gear for purchase. Noticing the similarities between the symbol hanging from the shop and that of the ones printed on the supplies in the hideout, if you inform her about the location of the goods or bring them to her, Lanine will hand you 50 gold pieces and promises to help you in any way she can. Knocking on the door of a sizable wooden building, you find yourself at Fandolin's Miners Exchange. Here, you meet many local miners who wish to have their valuable finds weighed, measured, and paid out. The guildmaster here is a woman named Halia Thornton. She offers you 100 gold pieces if you can remove the leader of the red brand, Glassstaff, as the red brands have been an issue to the city of Fandolin. You can't help but feel that she has an underlining motive for removing Glassstaff, but that is an issue for another day. Rumors of an adventure residing in the orchard has steered you towards this unassuming location. Upon reaching here, you meet a half-elf named Duran Edermath, who tells you about a mysterious person digging around a ruin known as Old Owl Well. He is concerned that it may contain dangerous ancient magic from an old and lost civilization known as the Netherrel. You embark on a couple of days trek to the Old Owl Well and find an evil mage named Haman Kost. If Kost is confronted, you may fight him and his undead horde or attempt to talk to him for the mage is not particularly inclined to battle. He doesn't reveal why he is there, but is willing to reveal information that you would like for the exchange of a few requests. 1. He wants the orcs removed from Wyvern Tor, as they have been causing him trouble. 2. He wishes to know the name of who built the Old Owl Well, and tells you that Agatha, the Banshee, would know the answer. Alderleaf Farm is home to a kind and welcoming halfling named Kellen Alderleaf. Kellen invites you into her home, and even offers you her hayloft if you wish to stay there instead of Stonehill Inn. When asking her about the location of both Cragmoss Castle or the Wave Echo Cave, she points you in the direction towards the ruins of Thundertree, where you will meet Radoth. According to her, Radoth will be of much more help, as there's not an inch of the land he doesn't know. You set forth to the ruins and, during your exploration of the area, find a gaunt, white-bearded human. This is Radoth. If you ask him about the location of Cragmaw Castle, he will gladly reveal its location. If questioned about the location of the Wave Echo Cave, however, Radoff is much more reluctant about releasing the information. He requests that, in exchange for the location of the Wave Echo Cave, you will have to chase off the green dragon, Venom Fang, residing in the nearby tower. Doing so won't be easy, but may give you invaluable information. The only temple in Phandalin is a small shrine dedicated to Tamora, goddess of luck and good fortune. Here, you meet a young elf named Sister Garail. She wishes to offer a jeweled silver comb to a banshee named Agatha in exchange for the location of the spellbook belonging to a legendary mage named Bowgentle. Sister Garail offers you three healing potions as payment if you embark to Agatha's lair in the town of Conaberry and fulfill her request. Once reaching the town of Conaberry, you encounter Tribor Trail, the path leading directly into Agatha's lair. Once inside, you meet Agatha and offer her the comb in exchange for any one question, but only one. If questioned about the spellbook, she will tell you that she traded it away to a necromancer named Cernoth more than a hundred years ago. If questioned about who built the Old Owl Well, she will tell you that it was built by someone named Arthendal. Banshee will also reveal the location of either Kragmaw's Castle or Wave Echo Cave if you asked about it. Hopefully, you've asked her the right question. After a day's rest, you may visit the Townmaster's Hall. The Townmaster's Hall has sturdy stone walls, a pitched wooden roof, and a bell tower at the back. Posted on a board next to the front door is a notice written in common. It reads, Reward! Orcs near Wyvern Tor! Those of a mind to face the orc menace should inquire within. The notice bears the town seal and an indecipherable signature. Inside the hall, you will find Harbin Wester, a fat, pompous old fool, and a banker who is currently acting as the townmaster. Harbin is afraid of the Red Brands and defends their ex, calling them a mercenary guild and not all that much trouble. He offers you 100 gold pieces to travel to Wyvern Tor to eliminate the orcs residing there if you so wish to accept his request. Also at Townmaster's Hall is Sildar. Sildar is saddened at Gudrun's capture, for he believed locating the Wave Echo Cave would bring prosperity to Phandalin. He offers you 500 gold pieces if you are able to locate and eliminate the threat located at Kragmaw's castle in an effort to save Gundren. 
As you converse with him, he reveals that he is part of the Lord's Alliance, a coalition that try to bring law and order to the lands. Sildar learns that his fellow member, Iarno Albrecht, has gone missing at Tresender Manor two months ago and requests that you go there to investigate the manor and the fate of his friend. When reaching the manor, you find that this manor has been converted into the Red Brand's hideout. Here, you set forth to eliminate the Red Brands. The Red Brand's base in Phandalin is a dungeon complex under Tresender Manor. Before the manor was ruined, its cellar served as a safe storage for food and water in the event that the state was attacked, while an adjoining crypt provided a resting place for the deceased members of the Tresender family. The Red Brands have since expanded the cellars to suit their own purposes, adding slave pens, workshops, and barracks. You explore the manor, fighting off Red Brand ruffians as you enter various rooms. As you travel further, a slave pen is discovered where the Red Brands keep their captive travelers and citizens to be sold off as slaves. You fend off the two Red Brand ruffians here and encounter three captive commoners in this room. The three human commoners imprisoned here are Myrna Dendrar and her two children. A few days ago, the Red Brands murdered Myrna's husband, Thel, for defying them. That night, the gang returned and abducted the family. Myrna has nothing of value to offer you as a reward but tells you that a wizard runs this operation along with some fuzzy creatures. Additionally, she tells you of some treasure located in Thunder Tree if you wish to go and seek it out. When approaching a suspicious door in the manor, you hear faint bubbling and dripping sounds. As you enter, you notice books and potions sprawled across the area. This room appears to be a wizard's workshop. Bookshelves are crowded with sheaves of parchment and strange looking tomes. Through inspecting the area, a tome can be found that is written by an adventurer named Ermon. It contains information regarding the magical mace, Lightbringer. According to the tome, the mace was lost when the Wave Echo Cave vanished from history. Located further in the hideout is Glassstaff's quarters. The walls of this bedchamber are covered with drapes of scarlet cloth. The furnishings include a small writing desk with a matching chair, a comfortable looking bed, and a wooden chest at the foot of the bed. Sitting at the desk is a short, dark bearded human male in robes studying a tome. He wears a princely mantle of ermine. A beautiful glass staff leans against his chair with an easy reach. You capture the strange man and learn that he is indeed Glassstaff, the leader of the Red Brands. After interrogating him, you learn that one, Glassstaff is actually Iarno Albrecht, a member of the Lord's Alliance, and no other member of the Lord's Alliance knows of his betrayal. Two, he has set up the Red Brands in Phandalin to further his own selfish goals. Three, the Black Spider is a drow who sent him three bugbears to control the population of Phandalin. Four, the Black Spider is searching for the Wave Echo Cave to find the Forge of Spells. In Glassstaff's chamber, you find a letter addressed to the mage and signed with a Black Spider. It says, Lord Albrick, my spies in Neverwinter tell me that strangers are due to arrive in Phandalin. They could be working for the dwarves. Capture them if you can, kill them if you must, but don't allow them to upset our plans. See that any dwarven maps in their possession are delivered to me with haste. I'm counting on you, Yarno. Don't disappoint me. After eliminating the Red Brand threat, you now set your eyes on the Kragmaw Castle, where you attempt to rescue Gudrun. Heading deep into the woods north of Phandalin, you encounter the Kragmaw Castle. As you infiltrate the castle, you reach the King's Quarters. Here, you encounter the chieftain of all the Kragmaw tribes, King Grawl. King Grawl is a fierce old bugbear that rules over the Kragmaw tribes through intimidation. He holds a weakened Gundren hostage and threatens you that if you don't back off, he will end the poor dwarf's life. King Grawl is also attended by a doppelganger disguised as a female drow named Vyrith. Vyrith is a spy for the Black Spider and has been questioning Gundren regarding the location of the Wave Echo Cave. After gathering the information that she needs, Vyrith intends on silencing the weakened dwarf. As soon as you eliminate King Grawl and Vyrith, you help Gundren recover from his sorry state. He thanks you for his rescue, but refuses to leave the castle until he finds his missing map. A quick search of the room reveals Gundren's map conveniently hidden under King Grawl's bed. Now, you return to Phandalin with the lost ally and his lost map. Back in Phandalin, you discuss with Gundren the location of Wave Echo Cave. He urges you to set forth to its location, for he fears the Black Spider may have devious plans with the cave. Gundren offers you 25 gold pieces for your assistance and promises you 10% of the mine's worth once the operations at the mines are up and running. Hastily, you depart to the Wave Echo Cave 
For every second you procrastinate, the black spider gets closer to his goals. You approach the entrance of the Wave Echo Cave. The entrance tunnel leads to a large cavern supported by a natural pillar of rock and containing three stalagmites. In the western part of the cave, behind the column of rock, are three bedrolls and a heap of ordinary supplies. Amid the supplies, you see the body of a dwarf miner, dead for at least a week. This body is that of Thardin Rockseeker, the brother that has made his way to the Wave Echo Cave. His fate was grim, and it seems something must have ambushed him. As you delve into the mines, you fend off hordes of wandering monsters that roam the area. When approaching the wizard's quarters, a wraith magically rises from the ground. He introduces himself as Mormesk, and was the last wizard to die in the mines. Mormesk leads the undead horde that haunt the Wave Echo Cave and is here to protect his treasure of great wealth. He will offer you coins and gems if you are able to kill the spectator in the Forge of Spells. You may agree to this race offer, or engage him in order to obtain his treasure. Whichever option you choose, you move on to the Forge of Spells. Climbing the stairs into the forge, you take note of his decrepit state. This large workshop was badly damaged by the ancient spell battle that laid waste to the mine. Work tables taking up two corners of the room are scorched, and the plaster has been burned off the masonry walls. In the middle, a stone pedestal holds a small brazier in which an eerie green flame dances and crackles. This brazier was once able to imbue magical weapons permanently, but now, its magic has weakened. Thus is the effects of time on strong magic. Behind the brazier is a floating monster with stalks of ice protruding from its body. The monster that guards this room is a spectator. One of the human wizards who worked in the Forge of Spells summoned the creature to guard the magic items created and stored here. When the mine was sacked, the orcs disturbed the delicate magic in the area, unhinging the spectator's grasp on reality. It has become deranged and believes the mine is still in use, ignoring all evidence to the contrary. The poor creature guards this room ever faithfully. However you wish to deal with the creature, you find in the room a magical weapon called Lightbringer and an enchanted breastplate called Dragon Guard. You move deeper into the cave with your newfound equipment passing through various waterways and caverns until you reach the Temple of Dumathion. Six cracked marble pillars line the walls of this hall. At the north end, which stands a nine-foot-tall statue of a dwarf seated on a throne, a mighty stone warhammer across his lap. Two bugbears stand by a table, flanking a dark elf dressed in black leather armor and robes. He clutches a black staff with a carved spider at the top and frowns as he sees you. This is Neznar, the Black Spider. He is accompanied by four large spiders that defend him to his death. You immediately engage with Neznar, for he has little to say. After a long-fought battle, Neznar is captured and is ready to be detained at the Townmaster's Hall. Before leaving for Phandalin, however, you notice a door in the corner of the room. Picking the lock, you are greeted with a dust-filled room and a beaten dwarf, bound and unconscious on the floor. This room formerly belonged to the priest in charge of Dumathion's temple, but Neznar has appropriated it for use as a cell. The figure lying on the floor is Nundro, the youngest of the three Rockseeker brothers. Neznar has interrogated Nundro harshly, once or twice a day ever since capturing him. Nundro is grateful for your help, but grimly informs you that the third brother, Thardin, has been killed at the entrance of the mine. With great sorrow for his loss, but relief with his safety, you make your way back to Phandalin with the captive Neznar and a freed Nundro. Through hard work and a little bit of luck, you have defeated the Black Spider, cleared Phandalin of the ruffians, and reclaimed the lost mine of Wave Echo Cave. Your deeds will be long remembered in this corner of the Sword Coast. In years to come, the restored mines will bring great riches to Phandalin and help establish peace and prosperity in the area. Gundren and Nundro take over administration of the new mine, as promised, they gladly award you 10% share of the mine's profits. If you wish to stay and build a home of Vandalin, the people welcome you with open arms. Even if you choose to move on and continue with your adventure, you will always have a warm welcome in Vandalin. Hello everybody! I hope you enjoyed the story of Lost Mines of Phandelver. As requested, I made this one a tad longer than my typical videos. If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate a like and subscribe. If you have any comments, please leave them down below. Thanks for watching!